Hello. Okay, it's Andy Sandham here. Okay, so today we're going to have a quick look at 3D Cut, and I do mean quick. So uh, I'll just load in a file. This is what you see when you first open up 3D Cut. This is the academic version. Uh, so let's just have a look. We can close this down. So this is your paint window. I'll explain as I go along. Let me have a look. Import. So you want to go to Import Model for Pixel Painting. Uh, so I'm going to do half a 2CV because it will save me a little bit of time. It needs to be an FBX or a .daE or a .obj. Uh, so it gives you these options. So just leave these um, auto mapping. Yeah, you, you've got an option here to keep the UV if you're bringing it in from Maya, but um, this, the purpose of this package is that you get much nicer uh, UV unwrapping than the Maya. So I need it to be really small. I'll show you why in a minute. So 256, 256, all school. Let's do it. Okay. So here's half my 2CV. Obviously, you wouldn't normally do half a vehicle, but I seem to remember this is because I was showing uh, previously how to uh, how to map how to speed up mapping by doing it in two halves and then just flipping it. Okay, so let me have a look what is next. So view wireframe, so you can just see where it has been built. Okay, so I just stopped it there because I don't know what see where it has been built means. So possibly I was trying to say how it has been built. But um, we're in the paint window at the minute. Uh, so we need to go to the, this has got a load of tools, uh, many of which I haven't used, but the primary element we want to use is the UV unwrapping and texturing. So um, we want to initially probably clear the clusters, clear the seams. Uh, and then as usual, this is your UV uh, unwrap window so if we go to unwrap we can see that we've got the body is one gigantic weird lump tires are okay because they've been cut in two halves well one of them has been cut in two halves uh, so you can see if you select it in this window you'll see uh, which area you're selecting on the left so hang on a minute I'll put on my uh, key press software Okay, so I've put on the, uh, the the button press software down here, bottom right, because it does use some different um, controls than Maya. So if you want to zoom in and out, you're pressing the right mouse button. Okay, uh, it's the normal spin with the uh, Alt and left mouse button. So basically, what we want to do now is we want to actually start cutting up our UV maps. But the first thing that I'm going to show you is that uh, this is the good part of this. Oh, actually, what I will show you is so uh, this has come out of uh, a game, the game we shall not mention. Um, and so this is the original text page, and this is 256 by 256. So it's really small, but it's just uh, a good simple example. Um, so I, next up, I will start to edit the textures so here's the really good thing about this what you can do is you can go to edit and you can go to uh, edit all layers in external editor so what this does is it automatically brings it into Photoshop or you may have to set this up uh, on the machine you're using so it knows which package to look for but it usually just seems to do it automatically so this layer here called wireframe is what we're looking for. So if we go image adjustments, brightness, contrast, we can see um, the UV map uh, page, UV unwrap page. So you're thinking to yourselves, well, why is the UV unwrap page not the same as this? So here's something really super important that I just forgot because um, I haven't used this for a couple of months uh, and it's really irritating, but um, you have to go back to the paint window and it will then say to you, you have changed something in the UV room. So if you go OK and OK again, uh, then what happens is it fixes your new UV. Um, so if we go back to the UV page now, uh, and then we go uh, sync layer with external, or you can do either of these, but let's just sync it again. It says update, and then now we see this tiny low res um, 
texture page. In fact, the wheels aren't even circular. It's so low res. So let's move on from here. Okay, so I've actually just gone back in and I've re-imported the .fbx because 256, 256 was just a little bit too stupid. Uh, so I've made it 512 by 512. Um, and so this uh, is called layers.psd and this is saved in the temp directory in the 3D cut um, uh, directory structure. Um, so we've got 512 by 512. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the 256256. 256. Well, in fact, what I'll just do is image adjust and I will do a uh, image adjust canvas size image size it's image size isn't it so let's change that to 512 and uh, let's do that maybe do a filter and do a little bit of a sharpen on it because we like that kind of thing okay so I'm just going to cut that and this is the interesting part is you always want to drag your wireframe to the top, um, uh, your wireframe layer, as you can see it. So I've just pasted the layer 2 in. So now if we go back to 3D Cut, actually, sorry, you know, to save this. So we're just saving this temp file with all these layers on. Go back into 3D Cut, and then if we go back to our paint, um, we can see uh, that now it's brought the texture in from Photoshop. So this has now become our texture map for the 3D core object. So back to UV. So really what we want to do now is we want to actually have a look at cutting this into UV shells, okay, or islands or whatever your preference for naming conventions is. Okay, so there are a number of ways of uh, cutting your seams to create the shells. So this is the slow one, which is mark seams. Um, so you can just click on a seam and there you go. But uh, one of the best ones I find is the UV path. So what you can do is, so obviously we're just trying to cut this like at the pattern for a, a cut, for instance. Uh, so it actually gets a little bit complicated down here. The model um, from the game we shall not mention. So I can, uh, I just want to cut the top part of the... Um, car off basically. Uh, so let's go along here. So all you do is, you'd, I'm just marking points uh, and then it's obviously joining the lines up. I'm sure you've figured that one out yourselves. Uh, keep going. Along here. Along here. Down to here. Maybe across there. Uh, so we're on the bottom of the car now. Uh, is that correct? Something funny going on there. And then uh, over to here. No, I'll just undo that. Over to here. Let's try up to there. Try along to there. So I can't seem to join that, but um, let me just see if I can do it by marking a seam there. Okay, so I don't know why I couldn't join it back to the original um, uh, the original initial point of the path. But um, okay, so now I've I've cut the top part of the car off. Actually, it's quite irritating with the check on, so you can just go and no checker, and that's a bit easier to see what's going on. Uh, and then what I will do is I will um, unwrap. Okay, so now we have got, if I go to this one here, that's the side of the car. That's the top of the car, so that hasn't helped enormously, to be quite honest with you. It's because I've got the bottom of the car it's because I've got the inside of the car as well that's what I've done so I'm going to need to cut the inside out as well but um so let me just have a quick look okay so I think it's probably going to be easier for me just to try and cut the side of the car off um, so obviously you want to kind of keep it try and keep planar uh, mapping 
areas whenever possible so things that are kind of on the same plane is always good as we know uh, so UV path let me start here uh, let me start here let me go up here let me go down here down here along here gripping stuff along here back along here and then back down to here okay and then down to there so again it's not letting me do that but so that has created let me just that has created an island so let me just unwrap okay so if I look up so as we can see we've now got a side island here so just two uh, if you remember it, what we need to do we need to go back to paint so if we go back to paint it will update everything uh, and then we go back to UV and then if I go sorry when it went, all went grey there I'll show you why that happened in a minute uh, so back to UV now everything's updated let's go and uh, edit sync with the external editor so update so um, it's basically it's basically removed our uh, texture page that we previously created so let me just copy that so I actually have no idea why I did delete the texture there I was just checking if there was any rhyme or reason to it but uh, all I've done is I've just come back here and just cut this out again and just pasted it back in so now you we can see with our UV uh, wireframe that um, we've got the side of the car here so basically if I was to do this as quickly as possible if I just go image uh, edit transform and then flip uh, done the wrong layer of course hey transform flip vertical that's in the wrong direction this is uh, I spend most of my life doing this I must have lost at least uh, a year out of my life flipping it in the wrong direction um, okay is that correct I believe it is okay so let's do a quick hack job here obviously you will be doing this uh, much more carefully but um, I also I would also obviously need to paste the front part on or I could separate this section into a shell but what I'm going to do is uh, just I'm trying to match the back end with so it's effectively that section um, just scale it down so it's about right so really bad uh, job but uh, if I just save that uh, and then we go back to uh, paint let me hang on a minute let me just sync with external editor nope that's the wrong way around I want to go back into here and let's go to paint okay and so now we can see that it's a very low resolution texture but we can see that we're starting to get the correct textures on here so uh, this isn't actually the easiest model to be quite honest with you but um, you can see the process uh, and one of the primary things you can do if you're creating characters is that uh, you can paint along the seams so if you've got um, for instance seams on the uh, the hair of your character where it joins the skin on the head um, you will be able to paint across those seams to make sure that they're not visible so it's a really useful tool just simply because of the fact that it corresponds between Photoshop and 3D coats you can keep adjusting keep fiddling uh, and it's a really nice package for that so uh, I apologize for the speed of this tutorial uh, because I'm in a hurry but uh, I hope it's helped in some way thanks